ng Philippine Commission on Women at ng Philippine Broadcasting Service. Ang programang tumatalakay sa mga usapin kaugnay ng gender equality and women's empowerment. Implementasyon ng Magna Carta of Women at iba pang specialized laws. At mga kwento ng kababaihan na kapupulutan ng aral at inspirasyon. Tinig ng kababaihan. Mapakikinggan tuwing Huwebes, alas 4 hanggang alas 5 ng hapon sa Radyo Pilipinas 2, 918. Naka-livestream din sa Facebook page ng Philippine Commission on Women at PBS Radyo Pilipinas 2. Babay ako at may silbi sa lipunan di pa api Isinusulong ko mga layunin, karapatan sa mga usapin Sa edukasyon, sa pagsasanay, kahirap ang kalusog ng taglay Pakikipaglaban, sa karahasan, at isang matungtong galian Babay ako, may panindigan, di matitinag kailan pa man Para sa karamihan Mekanismong dulot ay pagunlad Sa kababa ay ang ipatutupad Sa usapin sa ekonomiya Sa lapat ng pagtawat ng media Sa kapataan ang kalikasan O sa ngang buong sambayanan Babay ako may panindigan Di matitinag kailan pa man Babay ako na may karapatan May boss at may kakayahan Malakas ang loob, busong tutupad Babaeng palaban ng hamon ng buhay dito susukuan Kung may kapal sa iyo'y nananali Handang harapin ang naman ang palaki Oo si Juana, babaeng palaban ng hamon ng buhay dito susukuan Si Juana ko, si Juana ko Babae ko, may panindigan Di matitinag kailan pa man Babae ko, na may karapatan May boss at may kakayahan Malakas ang loob, busong tutupan Para sa karamihan Mekanismong dulot ay pagunlad Sa kababa ay ang ipatutupad Sa usaping sa ekonomiya Sa lapat ng pagtawad Na 
Habang ilabas ka sa apat na sulok ng kahirapan Alisin ang takip na humahad lang upang maabot ang karangyaan Iahon sa sisid lang pananaw at adisyon na napata sa akin ang mulatan Itulak ang diting ng diskriminasyon sa ginagalawang lipunasan Tinig kang tinig ng kababaihan Tanaw na madahalaga niyang di matatawaran May masagabong pagtiriwang Sa pakinabang ng tulot ng angkin niyang kakayanan May paraan upang bigyan ka ng tamang pangingap sa kalusugan Ang kinin ang pagunlad na dulot ng edukasyong di nalilimitahan Humakbang palabas sa parisukat na nagbistulang kulungan Patunayan kaya makipagsapayan sa mga pinunong kalalaki ha Sa atas ng tapang Tinig ang tinig ng kababaihan Tanong na madahal ang ganyang di matatawaran May masigabong pagtiriwang Sa pakinabang na dulot ang angkin niyang kakayanan Panahon ang kahon ang media ay pawalang ka ng tuluyan Ipakita ko ano ang tunay na taglay mong kagandahan Layain ka sa kahon ng mga batas pang kalikasan At isa alang-alang din ang iyong pangailangan at kapakanan Tinig ang tinig ng kababaihan Tanaw na madahal at ganyan di matatawaran May masigabong pagtiriwang Sa pakinabang na tulot ng angkin niyang kakayanan Panahon ng itaguyod ang karapatan na pasakasan sa madilim na kahon, lumaya sa pangaabuso at pagkakipit sa digmaan Naging mga munting kababaihan sa mundo'y sumisibol pa lamang Huwag sa kahon arugain kundi sa bisig at pag-ibig ng magulang Sa labas ng kapal Tinig kang tinig ng kababaihan Tanaw na madlahal at ganyan di matatawaran May masigabong pagtiriwang sa pakinabang na dulot ang angkat Sa lapas ng kahon, dinig ang dinig ng kababaihan Tano na madlahal at ganyang di matatawaran May masigabong pagtiriwang sa pakinabang Nang dulot ang angkin niyang kakayanan
sa pamamahal at pagpasya Sa social media para siya nilarawan Mahinang kasarian o may batas na karapatan Sa iwan na sadyang kamanghamang ka At tagumpay ni Juan
Philippine Commission on Women at ng Philippine Broadcasting Service. Ang programang tumatalakay sa mga usapin kaugnay ng gender equality and women's empowerment. Implementasyon ng Magna Carta of Women at iba pang specialized laws. At mga kwento ng kababaihan na kapupulutan ng aral at inspirasyon. Tinig ng kababaihan. Mapakikinggan tuwing Huwebes, alas 4 hanggang alas 5 ng hapon sa Radyo Pilipinas 2, 918. Naka-livestream din sa Facebook page ng Philippine Commission on Women at PBS Radyo Pilipinas 2. Today marks a very special day for you and women here in the Philippines as we embark on galvanizing our work in promoting gender equality and women's empowerment in the country through a more proactive approach. I think it makes it makes a lot of sense by the fact that we are living quite in some way dramatic moments the planet the society the world and it requires this renovated leadership with women certainly they can make the difference the latest women in business report in 2022 shows that the Philippines has dropped from our top spot in the ranking of female leaders in senior management roles. But this does not mean that all hope is lost, that we should just give up. We should take this on as a challenge to continue our fight towards gender equality for the future generation. Every March, the world celebrates women's rights and advocates for empowerment and equality. Well, this is not the case at SM, because here, we don't celebrate women in March. We celebrate women every single day of the year. It feels surreal and exhilarating to have all of you here today, because it has been four years since we last celebrated our National Women's Month face to face. We have gathered here for a great cause. We want to break the code. Through the discussions today, we aim to decipher the meaning behind the code, unravel the digital gender gap, address the issue of women's underrepresentation in this industry, and identify ways to leverage ICT to promote the well-being of women and girls. Let us stand together in our common aspirations for inclusive development and remain at the forefront of social transformation for the benefit of women, children, youth, and other vulnerable groups. Today, may we honor Filipino women who tirelessly and selflessly serve their fellow men and country. A happy National Women's Day to all of us. Ang lahat ng ating ginagawa ay para sa Diyos, para sa bayan, at sa bawat pamilyang Pilipino. Shukran.
silbi sa lipunan hindi pa api Isinusulong ko mga layunin Karapatan sa mga usapin Sa edukasyon, sa pagsasanay Kahirap ang kalusugang taglay Pakikipaglaban Sa karahasan, pati sa matong tunggali Ay magbay ako Happy National Women's Month! Narito ang ilang paalala para sa ating digital forum. Respect is the key. Siguraduhin na tayo ay magiging magalang at marespeto sa ating mga komento at interaksyon sa forum today. Para sa ating game mamaya, siguraduhin na inyong susundin ang instructions o mga paalala para maging qualified kayong manalo. Kung may katanungan, ipost lamang ito sa ating comment section. Maaari itong sagutin ng ating resource persons mamaya sa ating open forum. Maaaring makuha ang kopya ng presentation materials ng speakers sa 2023 National Women's Month Celebration webpage sa www.pcw.gov.ph. Makatatanggap ng Certificate of Participation ang mga makaka-accomplish ng Attendance Form at Activity Feedback Form at makikibahagi sa hashtag We Can Be Equal Commitment webpage. Sa ngayon, maaari ninyo na pong ma-access ang Attendance Form na nasa text description ng ating live stream. Make sure na kayo ay nakafollow sa ating PCW social media accounts at PCW Golf PH sa Facebook at Twitter. Mag-subscribe din sa PCW YouTube channel para mas maging kabahagi sa ating talakayan ngayong araw at makasali sa ating game. At syempre, huwag ninyo pong kalimutan na i-share ang ating live stream so we can reach more participants. Maraming salamat at tumutok lamang dahil sa ilang sandali ay magsisimula na ang ating programa. Babay ako at may silbi sa lipunan di pa api Isinusulong ko mga layunin karapatan sa mga... Hello, magandang hapon, women and everyone. Welcome to the Digital Forum Series, Kasama All, Inclusivity in Innovation and Technology. Ako po si Camille Belda mula sa PCW, ang magiging tagapagdaloy ng ating programa at Excited na po ako sa magiging talakayan natin ngayong hapon. Ngunit bago ang lahat, maaari po ba kaming makahingi o maka-request ng heart reacts, ng smile reactions dyan? Ayan, meron na po ba? Thank you po. At you can also comment your Women's Month greetings and inspiring words para sa ating mga kababaihan. Also, Make sure to like, follow, and share the PCW official social media sites on Facebook and YouTube so you can join us in our discussion this afternoon. Quick recap lang po tayo ano, sa mga nakaraan nating sessions. Sino po sa inyo ang present noong March 15 sa ating forum na chat GE? Talk about gender equality. Noon po ay napag-usapan natin ang mga programa ng gobyerno kaugnay sa ICT. At last week naman, sa forum na Safe in Tech, Innovation and Cyberspace, nalaman natin ang ilang hakbang para maging ligtas online. At ngayong hapon naman po, ating pag-uusapan ang mga oportunidad at career paths para sa mga kababaihan sa industriya ng ICT. Kaya wag na nating patagalin pa. Simulan na natin ang programa sa pag-awit ng Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas na susundan ng God Advocates Prayer. Noon pa man, malaki na ang naging bahagi ng mga kababaihan sa lipunang Pilipino. Kaisa sila sa marubdob na paghahangad ng kalayaan ng ating lahi. Kabilang sila sa paglinang ng ating makulay na sining at mayamang kultura. Kasapi sila sa pagtataguyod ng mga adhikain ng kapwa mamamayan at sa pagtugon sa mga pangangailangan ng lipunan. Katuwang sila sa pagtuklas sa mga larangan ng agham at medisina. 
Kapanalig sila sa pagpapairal ng batas, karapatan at katarungan para sa lahat. Kabahagi sila sa paglilingkod sa bayan at sa pagpapanatili ng demokrasyang Pilipino. Sa paglipas ng panahon, hindi nagmaliw ang kanilang pag-ibig sa ating inang bayan. Mga kababayan, ito ang alay ng mga kababaihang Pilipino para sa bayan. Tumayo po tayong lahat at sabay-sabay nating awitin ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Welcome you to Kasama All, Inclusivity in Innovation and Technology. Iyan naman talaga ang ating hangarin, ano? Kasama All. Babae, lalaki, peoples of diverse soji, lahat tayo sa larangan ng ICT. So without further ado, we will now get the ball rolling. Let's start with our first segment. I see equality in ICT. Siyempre, kapag uh, usapang ICT, aba, siyempre, meron tayong pangunahing ahensya na abala para dyan. Ito ay ang Department of Information and Communications Technology, o DICT. Representing the agency, we are honored to have Under Secretary Jusel Batapasige. Attorney Jusel Batapasige was named as one of the Outstanding Women in Nation Service awardee in the field of ICT in 2016. In 2014, she was named as Philippine Individual Contributor of the Year during the International ICT Awards given by the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and Industry in the Philippines. Before being appointed to the DICT, she served as technical consultant for its Digital Cities program. Attorney Giselle Batapasige is currently the Undersecretary of the Department of Information and Communications Technology in charge of ICT industry development. Let's give a virtual round of applause to DICT Undersecretary Attorney Giselle Batapasige. Hi, 
Hi! Hello, Camille! Hi, Attorney Giselle! Yeah, am I uh, visible? Yes po, we currently can see you po sa ating screen. Yes po, uh, since we're currently experiencing a technical difficulty, pwede po ba na mag-out po muna kayo dito sa ating live stream and try to rejoin so that our viewers can see you po? Is it okay po, Attorney Giselle? Okay, so while we're waiting, batiin po muna natin ang ating viewers sa Facebook. Ano? Mayroon po tayong viewers mula, nakita ko kanina, sa National Telecommunications Commission. Mayroon din po tayong viewers from PSDBM, WAD. Hello, Sir Eric V. Ibarola. Mayroon din po tayo from City Prosecution ng Iriga. Meron din pong watching from Casimiro A. Inares Senior Elementary School sa Binangonan, Rizal. Hello rin po sa viewers natin from DBM Car. Ayan. Hello po sa inyo at uh, sana po ay uh, mag-join tayo until the end of our episode this afternoon. Okay? Is Attorney Giselle ready? All right. Let's give it up once again for uh, DICT Undersecretary Attorney Giselle Batapa Sige. Hello, hello, Camille. Thank you very much. Good I'm afternoon, with, uh, Attorney. Am, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon po, Camille. Uh, magandang hapon sa lahat ng mga uh, viewers ng programa mo. Uh, I hope I am uh, audible. So, um... This afternoon, uh, it is my privilege to uh, be part of this edition of Kasama All uh, on the celebration of the National Women's Month and on the topic of inclusivity in innovation and technology. Uh, I just came from an event uh, which is also focused on women. Uh, this is the gender-based AI policy. Uh, which is a uh, project of the Department of Information and Communications Technology together with the International uh, Telecommunications uh, Union. And um, in that activity, uh, na-share ko rin po itong ating project na tinatawag natin na DIWA. Uh, for those interested, I'd like to uh, invite you. We have our Facebook page uh, for digital innovation uh, for women advancement. No? So, uh, what is digital innovation for women advancement? Uh, basically, it's a an, it's an idea that was inspired by the uh, participation of the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or the DICT, in last year's um, ITU Plenipotentiary 2022. Uh, ITU is the International Telecommunications Union. It's the uh, United Nations arm that's handling... Uh, information and communications technologies and telecommunications. Uh, this particular uh, international body uh, has been established in 1856. You just imagine, no, 1856 pa. And for the first time last year, uh, out of more than 100 years of its existence, uh, the ITU, all the nations, about 198 countries around the world, uh, elected its first uh, woman, Secretary General, uh, we consider this as having broken the glass ceiling uh, on the part of Secretary General Doreen Bogdan Martin of the uh, International Telecommunications Union. And so, uh, ito pong uh, inyong alagad, uh, as the representative of uh, the Philippines through the DICT sa ITU, ay na-inspire po dahil uh, itong uh, international na body that takes uh, care of policy making and direction for the whole world in so far as ICT is concerned ay naghalal po tayo ng isang babae for the first time na maging Secretary General. Ang isa pa pong inspiration natin was that uh, during that ITU plenipotentiary in Bucharest, Romania, kung saan ang Pilipinas po ay tumakbo para magkaroon ng isang uh, seat sa ITU Council, kung saan 48 countries lang po ang nabibigyan ng chance to sit in the council to serve as the policy-making body of the whole of the whole world, ang Pilipinas po ay tumakbo at uh, naging mapalad 
and was given a seat uh, in that council. And uh, ako po ay proud to say na isang babae po ang uupo bilang ITU counselor sa ITU at uh, ito po yung inyong lingkod. No? So uh, during the plenipotentiary, uh, na-invite po tayo to speak in uh, Digital Women Leaders Breakfast, one of the side events in that uh, ITU plenipotentiary uh, of 2022. And I was there and I was sitting alongside different uh, ministers and deputy ministers coming from different regions in the world. Merong uh, Africa, Europe, uh, the Americas, and of course, I was sitting there as representative of Asia Pacific. And uh, in that uh, forum, uh, tayo po ay natanong kung ano yung magiging gagawin natin na take away pagbalik ng Pilipinas. At ito po ang naisip natin na... Diwa is a Filipino word which is uh, short for uh, which which stands for a uh, mindset you no know? uh, kasi naisip natin na uh, whatever policies kahit ano pang ganda ng sistema kahit marami pang resources it all boils down to still the mindset of Filipinos how we view the participation of women uh, in ICT courses and in ICT jobs and ecosystem so uh, essentially, DIWA is a collaboration of women to harness the role of ICTs to advance gender equality. And gagawin po nating springboard din itong DIWA para mapush ang advocacy na pataasan, no? pa-increase pa yung number of women uh, enrolled in ICT courses, also in ICT certifications. Uh, ito pong DIWA uh, basically is aligned with uh, ITU Resolution Number 70, uh, uh, adopted, uh, as I said, last year sa Bucharest uh, for gender inclusivity. Aligned din siya sa ating sustainable development goal uh, to mainstream gender across uh, SDG goals and targets. Aligned din siya sa ating APEC Ayutera plan uh, na nag implement po ng sinasabi nating Putrajaya Vision 2040 among APEC economies para magkaroon tayo ng uh, strong, balanced, secure, sustainable, and inclusive growth para sa babae at lalaki. No? And of course, it's also aligned with the ASEAN Digital Master Plan. Ano po yung uh, ina-address na problem or reality ng DIWA? Uh, basically, limang key uh, considerations uh, based on reality. Number one, we have a shortage of digitally skilled workforce globally. Hindi lang sa Pilipinas, kundi sa buong mundo, kulang na kulang po tayo ng tao na magagaling sa digital skills. Uh, kaya kinukulang at nahihirapan yung ating mga industries and companies to really look for employees and workers. Number two, sobrang baba ng number of women enrolled in ICT courses kumpara sa mga kalalakihan. Kaya uh, hindi po nabibigyan ng participation ang kababayanan kasi hindi rin sila na, uh, na ano, nagpa-participate sa mga ICT courses. Pangatlo, there are millions of new jobs requiring uh, ICT skills and digital skills. Sobrang dami po. Sabi nga nila, uh, madi-disrupt daw yung trabaho at uh, mawawalan daw ng trabaho ang tao dahil sa disruptive technologies. Pero sa totoo lang, mas maraming trabaho ang makikreate ng disruptive technologies. Even as we speak, marami pong mga trabaho na available. Ang problema, walang skilled na tao na takers of these jobs. Uh, Tang-apat, Napaka liit or napaka low ng level of digital competence among our college graduates, no? Uh, may mga study in the past na uh, ang ang kurso is computer pero hindi naman marunong at marami ang digital skills. Computer lang yung pangalan ng kurso, no? So these are things that we want to take a look at. And finally, uh, according to researches, maraming mga trabaho na mawawala. Tapos, ang mga maiapiktuhan nito ay talagang mga kababaihan. In short, dahil sa mababang level ng uh, positions na ino-occupy ng kababaihan, mas sila ang vulnerable uh, for this uh, disruption or for uh, the uh, abolishment of this, uh, abolition of these jobs available. So, ang gusto po natin gawin sa DIWA, tatlong key strategy just to share, is number one is to ensure women and girls access to the internet. Kasi yun po ang isa sa mga pinakamalaking mandate ng DICT. Magkaroon ng connectivity. Uh, connect especially the unconnected. Uh, accessible uh, ang ating connectivity sa lahat ng uh, sulok ng Pilipinas. no? Para mag-improve yung participation ng ating kababaihan. 
Uh, ang connectivity po, hindi dyan nagtatapos ang dapat nating uh, ihangad. Uh, but then again, at the end of the day, merong connectivity, pero ang purpose pa ng connectivity ay one, magkaroon po tayo ng economic development at empowerment bilang kababaihan. Meron po tayong innovation, magkaroon po tayo ng ways to think of new things, new ways, new businesses, enterprises, kung saan makakapag-income tayo, makakapag-participate tayo. Number three, magkaroon po tayo ng skills in entrepreneurship, makapag-negosyo tayo gamit yung access na or connectivity na na experience natin. At pang-apat, which is very close to my heart and very important as a undersecretary in charge of policy, is really magkaroon tayo ng boses. Uh, magkaroon tayo ng uh, sariling uh, pananaw na maibabahagi natin in the area of policy making. So, yun ang una. Number two, uh, ang diwa po ay magiging vehicle din para sa iba-ibang mga organizations, uh, hindi lamang sa Pilipinas, kundi sa ibang bansa dahil magkakaroon tayo ng mga collaborations para i-promote yung involvement and interest of women and girls in digital technologies. Karoon po tayo ng bagong pananaw na pag sinabi natin blockchain, AI, uh, Internet of Things, data analytics, hindi po siya pang lalaki lang. Pwede din pong maging bahagi ang mga babae, magkaroon sila ng educational opportunities, magkaroon sila ng certifications and skills training in this area. And finally, pang tatlong strategy ng DIWA is really to encourage the use of ICT. Magkaroon po tayo ng trust sa digital solutions uh, kung saan gagamitin po natin ito to promote gender equality. Kaya nga nagkakaroon tayo ngayon ng mga activities, even as we speak, on ensuring that AI and systems uh, using AI will be more gender sensitive, no? using their language, using their system, para hindi po ma-exclude yung kababaihan. And of course, uh, using ICT para i-recognize an integral role uh, ng kababaihan sa economic development. So ito po yung ating mga uh, strategy sa diwa. Ano po yung ating thrusts in terms of policy? Karoon po tayo ng mga batas, mga, mga marami pang policies na i-promote yung ICT education, i-address yung gender bias, especially for women working in ICT. Makapaghanap po tayo ng mga series of scholarships and mentorship para sa kababaihan na gustong sumali sa ICT. Mag-partner po tayo sa industry at mag-advocate po tayo ng policy changes. In the case of skills trust, ang tinitingnan natin sa DIWA is really to create a concerted movement and effort around the country na i-push po natin ang pag-promote ng basic computer skills, digital communication skills, data analysis skills, social media skills, coding and programming, and even cybersecurity skills. Ito po ang sinasabi nilang pinaka-basic na dapat alam natin. No? Sabi nila, noon okay na, marunong ka lang gumamit ng computer, okay na daw yun. Hindi po yun okay. Hindi lang gamit ng computer ang kailangan mong malaman. Kailangan malaman mo rin how to protect yourselves from cyber threats. Even ordinary citizen, dapat alam yan. How much more kababaihan. Then, we, in the area of skills, we're also looking at trying to increase the level of knowledge of our women. Kasi sa ngayon, Ang masasabi natin, pag sinabing kababaihan, mag-encode, encode lang sa computer, konting Excel, konting PowerPoint, yun na yun. So, what we want to do sa DIWA is really to say, uh, I mean, is really to see that women move up the complex digital skills. Magkaroon sila ng uh, skills in terms of data analysis, artificial intelligence and machine learning, cloud computing, mobile application, uh, digital content creation, uh, coding and software development, cybersecurity information. So high level, high value jobs para mas mataas ang sweldo. Hindi lang yung mag encode ka, magta-type ka lang, magka-cut-paste, cut-paste ka lang. Sobrang baba ng level na yan. No? So uh, of course, we can stay there. Pwede yung kababaihan parang pag encode encode at cut paste lang but they can also aspire for higher value jobs if we give them the opportunity no and finally in the area of inclusion ang tinitingnan natin is really to use diwa as a platform to promote gender equality wherein kung mataas ang sweldo kababaihan may chance yung kababaihan to really apply for higher digital skills higher value jobs uh, requiring digital skills mas makikita natin yung sinasabi nating gender equality. Hindi lang sa, sa salita, kundi talaga sa, sa actual application. We're looking at economic empowerment as the main policy thrust. Hindi po ito para lang uh, isang social economic or isang social issue na gusto lang natin 
maging equal sa kalalakihan, kundi ito rin ay pagtulong sa bayan na kung saan tayo ngayon ay kulang ng tao, kulang ng manpower, eh bakit hindi natin ini-involve yung kababaihan sa kakulangan ng tao, sa kakulangan ng mga tao na may digital skills? And thirdly, we also want to uh, develop innovation and creativity. Pag sa isang opisina, puro lang lalaki ang participants, hindi na bibigay at nasasali yung lens ng kababaihan. Kukulang ngayon tayo, kukulangin tayo ng creativity kasi hindi inclusive yung ating environment. And finally, social development and inclusion. Paano ito? Kung ating mga kababaihan are equipped with digital skills, kahit saan pa sila pupunta, kahit nandun pa sila sa healthcare, nandun sila sa education, nandun sila sa uh, culture or arts or ano pang klaseng field, pag sila ay digitally skilled, mas nakakaambag sila ng malaki sa ekonomiya natin. Kasi they are highly skilled. So, ito yung mga goals ng DIWA, Camille. And uh, I know I can go on and on in explaining to you how we will unroll this uh, particular project which we have started in November. But yun lang muna, uh, in a nutshell, ang essence ng DIWA, uh, ang pinaka-spirit ng DIWA is really to make sure that ang ating sinasabi ay talagang ginagawa natin. That's why ako, as a part of a government now, I used to be part of the local government, I used to be part of the private sector. Kaya paano naninibago ako sa national government? Kasi marami tayong matataas na layunin, pero ang tanong, ito ba ay napifeel ng mga ordinaryong tao? Ito ba ay napifeel ng mga kababaihan? So that's why ito yung challenge ko sa sarili ko na in the next six years, that I am given this opportunity to serve the country, ay maghanap talaga ako ng paraan na ma-feel talaga ng uh, ating mga uh, kapatid, especially mga kababainhan, na merong change no, sa kanilang uh, pamumuhay, magkaroon sila ng chance na mangarap dahil mayroon silang skills, mayroon silang opportunity na makilahok sa ating ekonomiya dahil uh, mataas na ang antas ng mga tao, especially kung sila ay equipped with digital skills and uh, digital uh, opportunities. So maraming salamat uh, sa PCW. Uh, kayo po ay tinitingnan natin na napakalaking uh, partner natin, napaka-importanting partner natin para, ta- para ma-achieve natin ang sinasabi nating inclusivity na tema na natin sa hapon ngayon. So once again, thank you and good afternoon to everyone. Maraming maraming salamat po, Yusek Jocelle, for that very... ...kung ginawa ni Yusek Jocelle to be able to share and propose DIWA sa 2022 ITU Plenipotentiary Conference. Ano? At napakagandang pakinggan na ang DIWA, it aims to really... A push and forward for gender equality and women empowerment to involve women in the field of ICT at syempre uh, mapanatili natin na connected ang kababaihan. Again, maraming maraming salamat po, Yusek Jocelle. Sa audience po natin, if you have questions for our speakers, ilagay po lamang natin ito sa ating comment section so that we can address it and ask it to our, to our speakers later in the open forum. All right, let's proceed to our next speaker. Kung kanina po nakita natin ang opportunities for women sa ICT, syempre hindi papahuli ang field ng science and technology. Dito maaari ding lumevel up ang mga kababaihan, tama po ba? Kaya naman ngayong hapon, we have a speaker from the Department of Science and Technology, specifically the Advanced Science and Technology Institute, or ASTI. It's a privilege to have in our panel Ms. Vanessa O. Osiana, Science Research Specialist 2 from DOSD ASTI. Ms. Osiana is an ICT project manager. She received her undergraduate degree in BS Computer Science from Bicol University in Legazpi City, Albay, and completed her master's degree in technology management from University of the Philippines, Diliman. Ms. Oceana is currently the lead of the project management team implementing projects in systems engineering, intelligence systems, blockchain technology, and quantum computing simulation. 10 years na po siyang public servant, and she uses this to promote careers 
for women even in male-dominated fields. Palakpakan po nating lahat si Ms. Vanessa Osiana. Good afternoon, Ms. Van. Good afternoon, Ms. Camille. Am I being heard clearly? Yes po, the screen is yours. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Science, mathematics, computer, research, technology, some of the buzzwords way back in my days and are still relevant today. So let me give you a short story. Years ago, a young lady in the province dreamt of working in an office. A decision of a girl student to do her best to manage maintaining to be in a special science class is the best effort she can give herself Though it was tough and challenging, it was her pride that she graduated from the science class in their batch. Dahil sikat noon ang mga kurso na kinakailangan sa ibang bansa, katulad ng nursing, engineering, that girl took her guts to take the path less traveled, ika nga. And true enough, her classmates in computer science course are mostly men. Yung mga mukhang tambay sa computer shop hanggang hating gabi. But seriously, long and many nights of logical thinking to enhance our programming skills and make it work. There are times where she has to work, walk, and carry to class the big CPU just to present the projects and research works. Again, I am Vanessa Oshana, a science research specialist at the Department of Science and Technology. Advanced Science and Technology Institute, or dost -ASD. I am a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Computer Science from Bicol University and Master's in Technology Management from University of the Philippines Technology Management Center in UP Diliman. My current role is a researcher and an ICT project manager of multidisciplinary research areas, including systems engineering, intelligent systems, blockchain technology, and quantum computing simulation. dost -ASD is a research institute that is mandated to undertake research and development activities aimed at its strengthening and modernizing information and communications technology and microelectronics. Different industries from the academe and SUCs, national government agencies, local government units, and others sought consultations in our agency in the creation of an innovative ICT solution in their organizations. From digitization of teaching materials, information systems, predictive analysis, Internet of Things for plant growing through hydrophonics and robotics, to artificial intelligence, data science to provide maps used for disaster risk reduction and space technology initiatives. These are the current projects that we have and are being implemented. So how do we get into these roles with a career in ICT, technology and innovation fields? Curiosity, creativity and imagination. Women and girls have this special ability and skills that are at par or higher than men. I personally observe that um, we are very keen observers and can dig details through thorough questioning, isn't it? Create a comprehensive report, uh, being a team leader and a good decision maker. Do not be overwhelmed and have the courage to show the world what we can do to make a difference. Madalas kong nasasabi noon sa aking mga anak during their toddler and early development years, bakit ba ang dami mong tanong? This is a sign pala that kids nowadays do not just memorize information in their brains, but rather, they see to it that they understand its details to be able to comprehend and know its existence. So when do we start? I would like to tell for parents and teachers, let us start an early intervention by providing girls and women equal opportunities to have relevant resources 
and hands-on real-world problem-solving activities in our home and in school so that at an early age, we can close the gap that girls can be confident also to explore technology around them. With the early intervention, girls and young ladies can see to it that they can add value, contribute to innovation, and bring ideas with their own perspective. Our two kids, ages 15 and 10 years old, are both girls, by the way. Uh, they are now living in this what we call digital era. To harness their skills, to expose them for activities like programming, for them to gain skills like problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity. There are so many gamified activities to start kids into coding, like the Hour of Code of code.org. Code and now our eldest daughter is currently one of the student volunteers in the Codiverse and DevCon Kids, contributing her expertise in animation, web development, and robotics for free to support the next generation of computer innovators with her dad, who is also a volunteer IT instructor as well. There are other resources available. There are so many free resources available online, in books, and other tools. For financial resources, to pursue careers in technology, there are DOSD scholarships that funds eligible college students who are into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics strands. Others are local and foreign scholarship grants for master's and PhD. And there are also these so-called incentives for self-financed graduates, which I applied to and granted as a privilege to our, to our regular DOST employee that can obtain a degree in uh, either doctorate and master's level as a self-financed student. The career opportunities in ICT and innovation have a wide range of different roles. And this kind of world needs women and girls like you and me actively engage in finding solutions to problems, concentrate in the joy of discovery, and maybe on changing the world. This is our team. The systems engineering alone, we have roles like science researchers, business systems analysts, back-end and front-end software developers, UI UX engineers, software insurance, ICT project managers, system administrators, data and AI engineers, and the list could go on. For information, in our division, we are five out of nine females are in the leadership roles. In average, number of our project team members, we have 35 to 40% ratio of female to men. So being a woman in this high-tech industry does not make any of us less than our counterpart. It is knowing and acknowledging our weakness through pushing ourselves to be better and persevere in learning every day. So let us pursue our passion, knowing that we will one way or another have our eureka moments. So thank you for listening and being inspired by our stories like mine and all the speakers who will share theirs later to pursue careers in the diverse world of innovation and technology. Again, I am Van, ICT project manager, public servant, a wife, a mother of two. And I am still pursuing my career in this field of ICT to help our country and fellow men. And you can too, because why not? Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Ms. Van. Thank you for emphasizing can do to the world. Curiosity, creativity, imagination. At uh, nabanggit po ni Ms. Van kanina na, na mahalaga na magsimula tayo habang maaga pa. And it is uh, equally important that we provide women and the youth, of course, of equal resources and opportunities. Again, maraming maraming salamat po, Ms. Van. Should you have questions for DOSD-ASTI, 
feel free to comment them on our live feed on YouTube and Facebook at kokolektahin po namin yan para sa ating open forum mamaya. Before we proceed to the next part of the program, magkakaroon po muna tayo ng isang pampasigla. Let us play the Crack the Code Challenge. Bukas po itong ating energizer para sa ating Facebook participants. So simple lang po ang mechanics itong ating game, ano? Magpa-flash po kami ng mga emoji or code sa ating screen. Huhulaan ninyo lang po kung ano ang tinutukoy na salita batay sa emoji o sa tunog nito. Yan, nakikita ninyo po sa ating screen ang halimbawa. Maglalagay po kami ng marker sa comment section sa Facebook na I cracked the code. At ang unang makapagbibigay ng sagot sa ilalim ng marker na ito ang mananalo. Kunwari po dito sa code na ito, emoji ng Y at ng Pi. Ang sagot po ay Wi-Fi. Muli ang unang makapaglalagay ng tamang sagot under the marker ang winner. Kagaya ng nabanggit kanina, bukos, bukas po itong an, ating energizer sa Facebook viewers. Kaya sa Facebook comments po ilalagay ang ating marker. Mayroon po tayong sampung codes, kaya mayroon din tayong sampung winners for today. Hindi na po pwedeng manalo ano, ang winners natin noong nakaraang episodes. Give chance to others naman po tayo. At hindi rin po maaaring sumali ang opisyal at empleyado ng PCW. Ang winners ay makatatanggap ng surprise gifts mula sa PCW. Ang prizes po ay ipadadala lamang sa mga mailing address na nasa Pilipinas. So since naka-live po tayo sa YouTube at Facebook, posible na may viewers tayo abroad. Ano? So uh, kung mananalo po tayo, i-provide na lang po natin ang mailing address natin dito sa Pilipinas. Okay, sana po naintindihan natin yung mechanics. Madali lang po, di ba? Handa na po ba tayo? All right, let's start the game. Crack the code item number one. Marker ready? And go! So, ang clue po natin dito, one word ito. May nakikita po ako sa screen na on at may tatlong linya. Okay, ang bilis sumagot ng ating viewers. May nanalo na po. Ang tamang sagot ay... Online. Online kasi on plus yung lines online. All right. Next item. Crack the code item number two. Marker ready? And go! One word po ulit. May nakikita po ako ditong susi at parang bulletin board kung di ako nagkakamali. Okay, we're getting answers. All right. Sige po, hula lang ng hula. Do we have a winner? Yes, we already have a winner. And the correct answer is keyboard. Dahil may susi, key, and then bulletin board, keyboard. Okay, crack the code item number three. Marker up. All right. One word din po itong ating pinagpukulaan. Nakikita po natin ang isang nanay na buhat ang kanyang baby. And then the next uh, figure or photo ay green board or black board. Alright, ang bibilis na magat ng ating viewers, ano? Mm -hmm. Sige po, hula lang tayo. Nanay, and then bata, and then may board. Ano kaya ang tamang sagot dito? Yes po, may nanalo na po ba? Alright, we have a winner at ang tamang sagot po ay motherboard. Parang halos lahat ng sinagot ninyo motherboard, ano? Puro motherboard, okay. Tama po tayong lahat, ano? Pero unfortunately, isa lang yung pwedeng manalo. Okay, next item. Crack the code item number four. Ayan. Medyo parang challenging na itong item na ito, no? One word pa rin po ito, pero meron tayong tatlong items na makikita sa screen. Marker ready? And go! 
Okay. May marker na po, so pwede na po tayong sumagot. May robe akong nakikita, may boat, tapos parang insects ito. Ano kaya ang tamang sagot? We already have a winner. Ang tamang sagot po ay... Robotics. Kasi robe, tapos boat, tapos ito pala ay ticks, kaya robotics. Okay, congratulations po sa ating nanalo. Next item, crack the code item number five. Marker ready? And go! Again, one word po itong ating pinahukulaan. May nakikita ko sa screen na palaka. Tapos yung pangalawang uh, photo, para siyang lalaki na naglalaro. Kasi may game controller. Ano kaya ito? Palaka plus naglalaro. May nakikita akong sumasagot ng program, may jumpstart, may fragment. May nanalo na po! Ano kaya ang tamang sagot? Napakadaming hula. Sige, tingnan po natin. Programmer! Programmer pala kasi frog. Tapos gamer. Pag pinagsama mo, programmer. O, di ba? Lusot. Okay! Next item! Crack the code item number six. Marker up! All right. Nakikita ko naman dito parang uh, target. Ano ba to? Parang dart. And then, yung second part, meron tayo parang electricity. Tapos may plug. Tapos may power button. Ano kaya ito? Sige, okay, I'm seeing shut down as answers. Shut down. Puro shut down yung sagot natin, ano? Pinterest. Voltage. Itong first na photo kasi parang may ini-aim ka eh, di ba? Pag nag-arrow ka, di ba? Pag nag-shoot ka ng arrow, nagda-dart ka. Ini-aim mo yung gitna para boss. Ay, ano kaya yun? Itong pangalawa naman, electricity. Oh, tapos may plug. Tapos may power button. Kapag nag-aim ka, di ba? Tapos may power button. Ano kaya yung tamang sagot? Ano kaya ito? Shutdown pa rin yung nakikita ang voltage. Shortage? Shut off? Voltage. Sige lang, hula lang po tayo. Sige. Okay. May, ta may nakakuha na po ng tamang sagot. Oh, medyo natagalan tayo doon, no? Medyo mahirap nga. Sige, tingnan po natin kung anong tamang sagot. Empower! Okay. Empower is the correct Answer. Next item, crack the code item number seven. Marker ready and go. Okay. Gangnam style. Sino ba kumanta nitong Gangnam style? Tapos yung second po, may teddy bear. Yung pangatlo ay uh, rocket. Ano ba to? Space shuttle. Okay. Mabilis, may nanalo na. Wow! Galing naman ang ating participants. Okay, the correct answer is... Cyberspace. Alright, next item. Marker ready? And go! Dito naman, may makikita tayong windmills. Tapos, yung second photo, may dalawang piso. May sumasagot ng Bitcoin. One word po ito, ano? One word ulit itong pinahuhulaan natin. May windmills, tapos may pesos. May nakakuha na po ng tamang sagot. Ang correct answer po ay... Yay! Windows! Dahil wind plus dos. Windows! All right. Congratulations po. Ang galing namang manghula ng ating viewers. Next item, crack the code, item number nine. Marker ready? And go. Alright, one word po ulit. Ang ating pinahuhulaan. Uh, anong bansa po kaya ang uh, may flag na ganito? Tapos yung pangalawang photo natin, bubuyo. 
Alright. May nanalo na po ulit. Okay, kita ko yung mga sagot natin. No, no, pare-pareho lang. Tingnan natin kung tama po yung hula ninyo. Ang correct answer po ay... USB, dahil flag of the US, and then ang English ng bubuyog ay B, so USB, alright. Last item for our Crack the Code Challenge. Marker ready. And go. Okay, so dito naman may nakikita ko parang utak, brain. Tapos, uh, may glasses siya, and then may notebook, may pencil or pen na nagsusulat. Then the second one is a telephone. Okay. Ang bilis talagang sumagot. May nanalo na po ulit tayo para sa item na ito. Ang tamang sagot ko ay... Smartphone. All right. Congratulations po sa ating mga nanalo. Sana po nag-enjoy tayong lahat sa ating energizer. Nabuhayan po tayo ano, kahit papaano. Maraming maraming salamat po for joining. At para mas exciting, mamaya na po natin i-a-announce ang winners na i-verify po ng ating team. Tumutok lamang po at abangan iyan bago matapos ang ating episode today. Going back to our discussion... We will Okay. We already know that there are lots of paths women can take in science, technology, innovation and ICT. And now our next speakers will prove that indeed women can break the glass ceiling in these fields and excel because indeed they can make it happen. Let's meet our first speaker. She is the executive director of Kubo Innovation Hub, a public-private initiative which she launched in 2016 to develop the Philippines' startup ecosystem. She completed her Bachelor of Science in Materials Science and Engineering with a, with a double major in Business Administration at Carnegie Mellon University in the U.S., she is a Filipina millennial that advocates for spurring innovation and technopreneurship as an engine for driving economic growth and competitiveness. She also leads the startup Pinay program at Kubo and hopes to support the advancement of fellow women in the tech space. A round of heart reactions for Ms. Katrina Rausa Chan. Good afternoon, Ms. Pat. Hello, good afternoon, and thank you so much for having me today. Um, I'll be sharing my presentation. There you go. And hello again, everyone. Good afternoon, Paul. Um, uh, thank you for having me in this Kasama All um, you know, um, talk today. I'm Kat Chan from Kubo. Um, so as mentioned, I'm... An engineering and business major and I was a girl and I could actually see the difference now in parang the number of women that participated in my engineering classes versus my business classes but I think more importantly like um now I actually work with a lot of technology startups or tech startups now um and at Kubo we try to help startups to grow their businesses um First of all, I do want to do a quick shout out to all of the women and you know like that were featured in the Juana Says campaign of um, PCW. You know? So if you haven't seen the series yet, I hope you check it out. So we, just some of these women on screen are the ones that are also startup pinais, are you know CEOs and founders of their own businesses. And I hope you'll see that there's such a diversity of you know women and different profiles that decide to enter business in tech and that. You can be one of them. So, you know, please check this out. And of course, happy International Women's Month to everybody. Um, so just to tell you a little bit more about our work. So QBO actually stands for the Bahay Kubo. So kung may garage sa Silicon Valley, dito sa Pilipinas, what we have in our backyards are the Bahay Kubo, right? And I think the most important thing it stands for is bayanihan or teamwork. 
So, you know, starting a business isn't something that you just do on your own. It's something na parang yun nga, you should work with your community and the resources around you, right? To uplift you and help you, especially when times get tough. And tulad ng name namin, um, Kubo is also a public-private initiative. So, it wouldn't have been possible without the support of DOST as well as DTI. But then we also worked with private organizations like Idea Space and JT Morgan to get it started. And now we have over 100, you know, private sector corporate partners, all of them wanting to support tech startups now. And we actually work with startups across stages. So from very early stage, like you're just coming up with your idea, you're still in school, right? All the way to, you know, I'm ready to list my company and get investors already. And we also work with startups across all the different sectors. No? So we see startups in agriculture, in education, in AI, in blockchain, right? So napakadaming areas where you can start your business and that's one thing to think about no so ang startup hindi lang yan apps hindi lang yan IT there are so many areas where you can actually build a business um and what do we do so i think i really want to you know segment it into three things right first is of course we want to grow the startup community we really want to encourage more people you know people like you to really try out your idea start your business or if you're not ready to do that yet to maybe join a startup company right so there are other career paths apart from maybe working at the government or like um joining a big corporation right like there are also so many interesting para meaningful businesses getting started in the philippines now and we hope that you'll have the tools to be able to and be aware about the different ways that you can participate in this ecosystem. Um, the second thing is we want to develop and invest in startups. So once you've decided to do that, we hope you'll join us at Kubo and like you actually participate in our programs no, to be able to advance your startup. And of course, we also need to build the whole ecosystem, right? So whether it's in the edu in education, it's you know working with corporates or with government, right? So maraming ibang elements yung putting up a startup apart from the business itself, right? And that's those are some of the things that we like to do at Kubo. And our vision really is again through bayanihan, through teamwork that we will see Filipino startups changing the world. So we believe that there's so much potential in this country to not just be consumers of tech, right? And we're already famous for being you know, the most engaged social media and all of these things, but also building some of these technologies that can really change lives. No? So, yeah, so that's basically what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so, you know, when you talk about Pinay Shiro's, I think we have a lot of very strong female examples, right, in different fields. So our very first gold Olympic medalist, right, was a female and, you know, mga Miss Universe and, you know, in the arts and in culture, right? Um, and... More and more, we're actually seeing also, and like, you know, the Philippines tops the number of surveys. Like, they, they say na wala namang problem, eh. Like, sa pagdating sa business, mas maraming lawyers and doctors and many professionals, right, that are, where women are actually at the top of their fields. Um, if any of you watch the startup K-drama slash, you know, GMA drama, right, the, the Bida there is also a, a female CEO, female boss, right? So, May problema pa ba? I think that was, you know, one thing that I get asked often kasi ang dami namang women that are already leaders, right? So, siguro for me, it started it's something very personal. So, when I started Kubo in 2016, ganyan yung itsura ng mga usual, almost all of our events. It's like, um, we would, you know, have like, let's say a mentor or a speaker or we would have a program and it would be all guys, right? And that's me, actually Halloween costume ko yan, pero ganyan yung feeling ko inside, no? Na parang, where are all the women and why why don't they participate, di ba? Ang ganda ng mga programs, ang galing ng mga speaker, pero the women don't, weren't showing up, no? And actually, this this wasn't just my anecdotal experience. We actually see, you know, in a lot of the studies have shown that especially in the tech startup space, there really is a big gender divide, right? So, parang mga 20% or less of the um, startups, the tech startups that are being founded have female CEOs. When they do have female founders, usually roles nila are in head of marketing, head of HR, but not the CEO roles or the tech roles, right? Um and then the few women that actually join tech startups, sobrang mas mataas yung quit rate nila, meaning they decide na after one year, six months, ganyan, they leave na and they don't continue to pursue like their careers in tech. And it gets even worse no, when you look at investment. So, you know, less than 10% of all the funding that goes to all the startups, right? Um, the billions of dollars that goes into startups, less than 10% of that goes to companies with 
even one female founder. And I think when you look at all female founded teams, meaning lahat ng mga boss or women, that's even less than one percent, right? Which is um, which is really you know surprising, right? And one thing that we you know like one insight that we found, right? And I think this is true for many of you. Pag nagisip kayo na sino ba yung sikat, right? Sa tech startups, like it's um I don't know, you might say Elon Musk or you might say Steve Jobs, right? Um and a, you know, a lot of these companies, right? Like, there's lack of diversity. Obviously, all of these ones on screen, the right? like they're all guys. But there's also lack of diversity in terms of where they're they're from. Like, most of these guys are from the US, in specifically Silicon Valley or kaya sa China, right? Um, they're all like engineers, for example. Like, yung yun ang level of wealth. And I think this this lack of role models, right? Also, kind of help makes it difficult for women to imagine that they can be you know, CEOs themselves, right? So, you know, like, I think part, that's part of what motivated me and what I am encouraging all of you to kind of join Startup Pinay. So Startup Pinay is really a community of women-led, women-empowered startup ventures. And, you know, we focus on, you know, build, exposing women, right, to um, this field, um, building their network, building their knowledge, and also, most importantly, getting them investors. No? Um one thing that we looked at is like that in tech, the algorithm is sexist. Parang ganyan. So what built the, you know, what built the data, right, is historically unequal. There are a lot of norms and messages and expectations, no, um, that kind of prevent people from, and that was one reason why, um, you know, we, we saw like, you know, few women participate. Um, before I play this video, right, I hope I get, I'll get some help from the tech team to play this video. No? Um, yun na nga, we, what we found was that when our messages were about tech, about startups, parang the algorithm would always show it to primarily guys. So young guys, like parang college grad in certain courses at certain ages. right? And one thing we did was you know, to think about um, specific topics that were associated as girly, like makeup, like um, health and beauty, right? But then serve people ads, no? like when they were watching a cooking show or something, that would actually help them think of a different message. So I don't, I'm not sure if it will work. Um, Baka you could play this video, please. Um, that would be great. Pero, so, you know, it's so time. Part, yeah. Time to turn your ideas into reality. A reality created by a visionary like you. An innovative problem solver who cooks up five-star tech solutions. A creative entrepreneur who's ready to build a business and be in the spotlight. A strong leader who empowers others. So like that was just one example of you know something you know like that if you're watching let's say a cooking show no na parang baka, you know encouraging women to think about something else right like and you know so you know this whole hack it um you know um campaign right this is really about three things um for startup in I so first is again hacking the conversation making sure that we talk about some of these um disparities right um you know, education, right, and hacking the thinking, you know, help giving women tools to be able to, um, you know, really grow their businesses, right? And of course, the action, right? So hacking the culture. And we really feel that this is important. And, you know, through, through the, in the last four years, we've really been focusing on, you know, a lot of parang boot camps, education programs, you know, mentorship, right? Like helping women identify other parang leaders who can, uplift them right and building their network um having pitch competitions no the specific investor matching specifically for women even ecosystem mapping no? so we would go to different regions and really try to identify and the more resources available to you if you're a female founder right um and also being very deliberate about selecting women to participate in international and media exposure activities. And last but not the least, but probably most important, no, building a community that um, can help women support each other. No? And this has been quite successful, actually. Nga, eh, parang, even a small thing like writing down in a poster na 
hey, like we're really encouraging women to apply, right, or to join this particular program has led to so many more, so much more participation among women, like in, you know, in various um, activities, no? And they've won, like, um, competitions globally, globally, no? So it's not like wala pala dun yung mga women. It's just that, like, in, minsan kulang lang sa spotlight, no? Um, so now we have over 250 female founders um, that are part of Startup Pinay. All of our events, you know, and this is like, you know, Again, so sobrang obvious, no? Pero have at least one female speaker or kung ano yan, kung panel yan, may isa at least na judge or na mentor, right? So sometimes, mas the bigger problem pa nga is that there are few investors, no? That can parang understand or relate to women, no? Um, you know, a lot of our startups now in our flagship programs have women in them. And yeah, I think it's also a cool one, yung, yun nga, with the online engagement and who our messages are getting fed to, no? It's not... It went from less than one fifth, right, to like now over half, right, um, women. So, and of course, you know, parang at least sixteen investments from our own fund um, actually have like female founders already. So there are so many exciting, you know, Pinay Tech heroes that have participated. Um, if you can't imagine yourself as a female founder, know that there are actually many like you. And medyo bakatahimik lang so far, no. Pero that's exactly what we're trying to change. The tech startup ecosystem is thriving, right? Like, it, I mean, even though minsan maraming bad news ngayon around tech, I will, I still confidently say na it's one of the few areas where you know you can really kind of take off, no, and like become a billionaire in your own, one lifetime, right? And we all need to be a part of building it. So, I'm gonna wrap up now by saying na you know there are so many exciting businesses that are being built right here in the Philippines, no, and they're you know everything from you know, more traditionally female things like the Mama, which is raised the largest Series A you non know, e-commerce for women and FH moms, like right, that provides jobs for women, but also things that are para less traditionally female, like Tiwala, which is in blockchain, or Nudge, which is in AI, right? So um I hope you check out these businesses, you kind of you know um participate in them, you know, and so many codes here, I won't read all of them, but you know, you don't need to have a degree in tech to be, be able to build a career in tech. Businesses are so much better with diversity in the leadership teams, right? And I really want to encourage all of you to, you know, go after, like, a career in tech. You know, there are resources to help you, you know, like, and there's so much opportunity, right? So please join this conversation. Be part of building the next solutions, right? And thank you so much. Maraming maraming salamat that for you. And uh, nakakatuwang malaman na mayroon palang uh, startup Pinay kung saan pwedeng lumapit ang ating mga uh, ang mga kababaihan na sum gustong sumubok po uh, sa pagsisimula or kahit matuto man lang. Ano? At kagaya ng nabanggitin nyo kanina, hindi naman kailangan na may background. Ano? Kasi pwedeng matuto pa lamang sila. And uh, we just have to find the right resources. At kagaya nga po nito, uh, isang halimbawa, magandang halimbawa, ang Startup Pinay. All right. Now it's time for our open forum. Stay put ka na lang dyan, Ms. Kat. I'd like to call once again Ms. Vanessa Osiana. All right. Simula na po natin ang ating open forum. So the first question. All right. From Ces Oredina. During the Breaking the Code forum at the SM Aura, there was a student who had difficulty in accessing her studies concerns that needed the net. This is Metropolis and yet nahihirapan pa rin. How can Diwa cope up with this gap? All right. So since um, wala po si uh, Yusek at this moment dahil may uh, kasabay pa po siyang uh, uh, event na kailangan atendan, babasahin ko na lamang po ano, ang kanyang answer. Okay. The, uh, her answer is, rest assured that the DICT believes that digital transformation is founded on strong connectivity. Okay. 
Let's proceed to the next question. From Jean Alsema, many women in rural areas have the capabilities to establish a startup. It's just that infra and facility for their digitalization is not available. How is the government addressing this matter? And for the private sector, how they augment the government in doing so? So uh, I guess pwede po tayong sumagot kahit sino sa atin can answer. And um, may sagot po dito, si Yusek Giselle. Okay, maybe uh, Ms. Kat can start answering the question. Um, first of all, like um, I think one one resource that you can tap into um, that's actually sort of in partnership with the government are the technology business incubators by DOST. So these are there, I think almost sixty of them now located, uh, many of them in public and state universities, where you know you can you can tap into the and the resources that's available there. No, as from speaking from the private sector perspective, naman actually I think we really we try to scout out no parang promising innovations and ideas that are investable um outside of manila so um i'm not sure if like yung yung very rural talaga no pero definitely like um a number of our very successful startups have actually come from outside manila right and you know what you know for example i hope that if you're interested in this space that you participate in mga we do like road shows and things like that where we really scout for um, new companies, no? And kasi definitely, when you think about the target market, parang mas malaki rin yung, di ba, yung 100 million population ng Pilipinas, hindi naman yan nasa, ano lang, nasa cities lang or nasa Manila lang. So, especially when the problem that you're solving is um, very scalable to rural areas, you know, let's say in agriculture and sustainability, even in education, right? It's actually an advantage sometimes that you have access to, you know, or have a different perspective or expertise, no? So, um, rest assured now we're actually actively looking for um, companies also. But in terms of building it up, palang, definitely try to tap into the resources that are available. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Kat. Maybe uh, Ms. Van can add on to that. Yes, for, um, in DOST, um, we also have these um, research and development grants for startups. So, not sure if what year is this. They have 14 startups get 43 million in R&D grants um, funded. So, some of them are yung nabanggit kanina ni Ms. Kat, yung mga different startups ng mga Pinay. So, uh, I'm sure yung iba doon is um, DOST funded. So, there are other startups um, funds where they can get, um, kailangan lang po maging eligible and they can um, check with dost.gov.ph um, DOST for more information. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Van and Ms. Kat. Ano, nabanggit natin. So, napakarami pala talagang opportunities, uh, maraming resources that women can tap into. Ano. At uh, inote ko lang din no, na yung mga may kakayahan na mag-provide ng ganitong resources, no, it's really important that um, we intentionally design itong roadmap natin para sa kababahi, kababaihan at syempre sa ating mga kabataan. All right. Next question. From Angelita Nicolas, so many Pinay leaders on a startup business is being recognized only during the Women's Month. What is the sustainability plan for all these startups? All are women-led. Okay, so um, maybe Ms. Kat can answer this question. Um, I guess I I'm not... 100% sure I understand the question of Ms. Angelita, but I think in terms of the recognition, I think that's exactly what we're trying to tackle also, diba? Na hindi lang during Women's Month natin, um, I don't know, pinapansin, right, yung mga women-led startups, but that actually... Um, we continue to, you know, not just patronize the, the businesses that they run, right? And also, na, yun na nga eh, um, 
paano ba? Um, na, yun na nga, masustain yung mga, like, for example, for us, di ba, yung mga mentoring opportunities, yung mga programs for our women leaders or things that we try to do throughout the year. So, syempre, iba yung level ng recognition pag um, ngayong March, right? Um, pero at the same time, I think good businesses, whether they're run by women or men, right, deserve our attention. I think sa Philippines, we have this tendency na mas impressed tayo pag galing sa abroad, right? But actually, there's so many really promising and interesting businesses, lalo na nung pandemic, no, na nakatulong talaga sa buhay natin or na ginagamit na ng mga tao, right? And so, um, I hope that you will continue to patronize these businesses, right? Um, and especially recognizing the ones that are women-led. Parang, ako, ako nga parang, it would make me very happy. For example, kung nakakarinig ako na pag nag-survey kami ng, oh, sino yung kilala niyong mga founder, ganyan na makakapagbanggit din tayo ng mga leaders natin na um, number one, Pinay, right? Or Pilipino, pero also number two na even better kung um, may mga females din dyan sa mga list na, ng mga idol natin. No? So, I, and in terms of the sustainability of the businesses themselves, of course, like, mahirap talagang magnegosyo, right? So, mataas, risky pa rin talaga at mataas pa rin ang failure rate, right? Pero hopefully, matutulungan natin yung mga businesses natin na talagang maganda yung business plan nila, di ba? Yung business model nila na kikita talaga, right? And, um, you know, pag nakakapag-deliver ka ng solution na totoo, di ba? Na may value talaga for the consumer, usually naman may, ano, kumbaga magkocontinue naman na mag-progress yung mga business na yun. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Kat. Ano, mahalaga na tayo, suportahan nga po natin itong mga ganitong businesses, especially the ones that are women-led. Hindi lamang during March, ano, kundi sa kahit ano pang month of the year. All right, uh, Ms. Van, do you have anything to say po? Yes po. Um, here in ASTI naman, because we are a research um, institute, so we are looking for... Um, licenses um, sana sa magagaling to from the startups which are kahit men or women led na makaka, magiging licensee ng aming um, technologies na um, we have started para ma-appreciate yung paggamit uh, nito and makarating talaga siya sa mga real end users. So our products are mostly in ICT and microelectronics and soon we will have a collaboration with um, a biotech project. Thank you so much, Ms. Van. Yusik Giselle also answered this question po and her answer is, allow me to read it, the DICT's top priority is connectivity over the next six years. We are launching the start of the Luzon Bypass in Baler next month. This is the start of looping the whole country through the national broadband. We are also aggressively promoting and helping connectivity investors to invest in the Philippines under the new policy regime, which welcomes foreign investments. We also intensify our free Wi-Fi program around the country. All right, next question po. From Maria Lourdes Bonalos. How can we empower women in agriculture through the use of digitalization, innovation, and technology? Could they make it into a startup business? Siguro mag-circle back tayo kay Ms. Van. Sibalan po natin kay Ms. Van. Okay, so naka-relate po ako dito because we have this um, IoT uh, for IoT... Um, phenotyping platform system. So it has a hardware, software um, components, and we have ladies in our um, project team. Um, our aim is to um, promote uh, agriculture education para mas ma maraming um, mag, mag venture na uh, into college, yun yung kunin nilang course. Because um, taking agriculture courses um, as per our research is nagde-decline na yung number ng kanilang um, enrollees. So our aim is um, a small-scale plant phenotyping um, hardware where they can use um, ICT, IoT, and then um, they can experiment with this para mas ma-appreciate nila na, oh, um, hindi lang pala pagtatanim yung pinag-aaralan doon. Um, dahil nag-i-innovate tayo, 
um, we are also appreciating kung paano ma kaka maa-apply yung ICT and agriculture um, uh, both um, technologies para uh, mas ma-enhance yung ating um, agriculture and um, of course yung education. So we are tying up with um, different um, colleges with agriculture para um, mas ma-appreciate ng kanilang students yung kanilang mga activities and real world activities um, to enhance their skills and um, every day yung madadagdagan yung kanilang matututunan. Thank you so much, Ms. Van. Ano, so may programa po ang DOST ASTI para sa pagpapalawig ng innovation and technology sa field ng agriculture. Ms. Kat? Um, yeah, I just want to say na actually agri, agri and food no, is one of the kumbaga, hottest sectors now, right? Pagdating sa um, everything from mga, let's say, yung food innovation mismo, like alternative proteins, di ba? Um, yung mga, mas mga, mga efficient or mga parang resistant na mga seeds, for example. So, all the way to yun nga, the IoT, parang mechanization of the farming. And all the way to the market side, no? So, yung pagtanggal ng mga middleman, um, alternative financing for your products, right? And um, so, I guess... So ito lang hindi ko tara, hindi madaling mag-business right unless may um expertise ka talaga hindi naman basta-basta makaka-build ka ng product pero I think my advice for our um our farmers no is to actually stay updated or to be aware sa mga maraming developments ngayon na nangyayari sa field na to kasi maraming yun nga maraming mga bagong bagong technologies and products no na makakatulong either in the production side all the way to you know the financing side the business side being able to access your customers no um di lang sa Pilipinas pero even uh, abroad so while maybe it's not necessarily na on your own makakapaggawa ka ng bagong innovation or product na gagawin mong startup right like maraming mga available na startups diyan na pwedeng pwedeng yun nga um mag maging aware kayo or you know do your research so that you can maximize these opportunities that are coming up because it's a rapidly um, evolving field. Right? All right. Tama naman po. Ano? Businesses really thrive over time. Hindi naman pwedeng in, in a snap of your fingers, ano na, no? Nag-succeed na agad yung business mo. You really just have to uh, find the right resources that would help you. Okay. Do we have any more questions po? All right. From Anjanette Mazzetos. What are the opportunities that we can have if we try to explore careers in ICT despite the fact that my current profession is not in line with ICT and innovation, but I know some basic knowledge in programming. All right, marami nang nabanggit kaninang opportunities sa discussion, but uh, maybe we can answer that answer this question pa rin po. Uh, let's start with Ms. Fan. Yes, um, there are many opportunities, um, nabanggit ko din to kanina, na there are um, free and paid online courses that we can take. Um, in ASTI, we have programmers and different uh, roles in the systems engineering group, which are not into IT and computer science. So, dahil naging passion nila yung um, technology and innovation, they tried to self-study. So, marami pong seminars, workshops, and trainings online. So, there are those that are free and uh, paid then. And they really tried to um, to learn. Kasi na when we have their interview, nababanggit nila na um, they're being challenged kasi na kung paano nila makoconnect yung old courses yung natapusan nila i-connect to technology to ICT so dun sila nag-start yung um, learning every day and um, do the workshops and trainings okay thank you miss vanna no so uh, basically you need not to have really a background you just have to embrace learning and development dahil marami tayong pwedeng i-explore all right miss kat 
Um, yeah, I guess similar sentiment, no? like, siguro specifically for starting up, which is like my, I know, I, I think as I mentioned towards the end of my talk, you don't need an IT background. And in fact, parang, it's just one role in the startup, yung, yung kumbaga coder, di ba? Parang we say nga, like, ang kailangan sa startup, may hacker, which is yun nga yung nag-code, di ba? May hipster, saka may hustler, parang gano'n. Yung hipster, yun yung user experience, yung design, di ba? Yung hustler naman, yun yung nagbebenta, yung parang nag, um, nag-iisip ng business, right? So, I actually encourage people, and I think the most successful startups no, are the ones that are started by people who really understand a problem uh, or really trying to solve something. So, kung ano man yung field mo now, wala namang nagsasabi here na kailangan mag-switch ka, lahat tayo dapat programmer, di ba, para maging successful in life. Like, I think it's more important na meron ka domain expertise dun sa problem or kung ano man yung tinatry mong isolve. And then, at the end of the day, like programming and IT itself is just a tool to be able to deliver that solution, right? Um, so, yun. Um, and in fact, more and more nga nakikita natin, I don't know if you guys have heard of yung mga chat GPT, GPT-4, ganyan, nakakapagsulat na siya ng code, halos mag-isa, di ba? So, um, focus less, if you ask me, on just the core hard programming skills, but really understand the problem and, you know, the sol- diba, that you're trying to solve. And at the end of the day, parang, um, I think that's, ano, parang how I would approach that. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Ms. Kat. Uh, do we have other questions? Okay, one another question from Jeanette Aguas. Marami po bang babae ang nagpupunta sa space technology base po sa observation nyo sa ASTI and Kubo? Okay, maybe this time Ms. Kat can start um. answering the question. Yeah, not so many yet, right? Actually, not so many pa nga ang pumapasok din sa space technology in general. Um, although, yun na nga, things like, for example, di ba, fun fact, di ba, yung GPS, yun din yung parang nakatulong sa paggamit ng Tinder, for example. No? So, minsan yung space technology isn't super direct. So, I think yung the end, end cases, right, like... um more and more women are entering the field. Pero in general, I would say, hindi pa ganun karami. And, you know, if that's something that you're thinking about, if you're passionate about space, you know, I I hope you'll actually try it out, you know, kasi marami rin programa that are trying to encourage, you know, more um, space exploration and technology, di ba, na related to space. So, if bet mo yan, try it out. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Pero ngayon, hindi pa masyadong madami. Yeah. Gusto, sukan, hindi ba? Wala namang imposible, ano? And we just have to reiterate that the ICT space is actually ready for women to enter. All right? Miss Van? Yes po. Um, I am proud na um, DOST, ASTE, dito po na born yung ating Philippine Space Agency. So before siya maging um, FILSA, um, sa ASTE nag-start yung um, space technology initiatives. And yes, I agree with Miss Kat na um, konti pa lang yung mga nag-venture or nag-study na, at magpupurso ng space technology initiatives. But there are programmers na din po and other data um, engineers, AI engineers, and um, different din ang kanilang background. So applied physics, mathematics, yung mga ganon, and the like. Um, so, hindi lang in IT and uh, computer science. Pero, we are still encouraging, lalo na sa aming um, pag-search uh, ng um, employees to um, search for different um, applicants from... Marami po kasi yung state universities and other colleges na um, into research na din. So, mas um, napapansin namin that they are um contacting asti and to see if they have um opportunities in this uh, field and yes um marami po na applicants and also students and also from philippine science high school na mga ladies and girls na nag um, super interested in ICT and space technology initiatives Thank you, Ms. Van. We look forward to having more women so field ng space tech. Okay, next question, or rather our last question for today. 
from Josefina Resurrection, what if the area where the farmers or anybody into farming got into an area where net signal is weak? Any government entity that can address this common problem to give aid for farmers in areas like these? Okay. So, um, Yusek Jusel actually gave an answer earlier po. Um, it's about uh, intensifying their free Wi-Fi program around the country. And uh, she also said that the ICT's top priority is uh, to improve connectivity over the next six years. Uh, she mentioned about launching uh, the Luzon Bypass Valer, where uh, this will be the start of looping uh, the whole country through the national broadband. Okay. Um, Ms. Kat and Ms. Van, maybe you can add on to this po and answer the question. Let's start with Ms. Van. Um, I think okay na po yung sagat ni um, Ma'am Giselle from the ICT. All right. All right po. Thank you so much, Ms. Van. Ms. Kat, do you have anything to say po? Um... Again, no, like um, I would just want to emphasize na yun na nga eh, parang take these problems and like see them as opportunities, right? If this is something that you're facing, is this something na, you know, can I come up with something that would augment, right? Like whatever problem you're having. No? So, I mean, it doesn't directly address the whole um, signal for farmers, but I think that's really the key insight no, behind any successful startup business or any innovation, right, is meron kang sinosolve na problem and siguro hindi lang nasasolve yung problem mo better if it's a problem that many people experience right and therefore you can scale it up um and din nga and that people who solve problems and build solutions right they aren't just guys like men and women can do this equally walang trabaho na panglalaki lang or pangbabae lang right so kung tingin mo um interesado ka in a particular thing or you want to solve something right like you should try it um and you shouldn't let, you know, your gender or being a girl stop you from doing it. No? So, yun, yun lang. <laughs> and and okay. dami, dami pwede isolve. Hindi lang yan apps, hindi lang yan ICT, right? Like, um, digital is really for all things, right? Na, um, naranasan natin sa buhay natin. Yeah. Correct, correct. Okay. And we can actually use technology as a means to solve any kind of issue or problem dito. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Kat, Ms. Van, and uh, Yusek Giselle for answering our questions. Okay. But before we actually let you go, mayroon po ba kayong mensahe para sa ating mga manonood, sa ating viewers, especially sa ating mga kababaihan? Let's start with Miss Kat. Um, yeah, actually, I, I thought yung kanina yun na yun eh. So, um, basically, like, again, just to reiterate, right, like, happy International Women's Month. But, you know, it, it's not just of this month, but really thinking about, like, our role as women and how we participate in the new digital economy, right? So, we can do it. If you're thinking of doing something, you should try it, right? And you shouldn't let, you know, norms or you know, para preconceived things, right, hold you back. And, uh, you know, please try to, you know, focus on the problems, right? Like, focus on the opportunities and where you can make a difference, right? And you can do it. You can do it as a woman. There, and there are many women with very different backgrounds and, you know, coming from all sorts of places, working on all kinds of things, right? And um, so, yeah, just go for it and, you know, and we're here to support you, right? So good luck. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Scott. Ms. Van? Yes, happy International Women's Month to everyone. Um, for girls, ladies, and women out there, um, let us all be inspired, katulad nung nabanggit ko kanina. Hindi, dyan, hindi lang sa aming stories, but um, to all the women na nakikita natin um, in different sector na, that they are doing, doing great in their job, um, do not be discouraged, but take it as um, advantage to um, find mentor, to, to learn, to upskill, um, and para mas ma-encourage pa tayo to, um, to do better and hindi siya labanan ng men and women but um 
to do our best um, hanggang sa ating makakaya. And that's it. Thank you very much, Ms. Van. Thank you, Ms. Van and Ms. Kat. Ano? Maraming salamat po dahil... ating naging discussion this afternoon. Thank you so much for inspiring and encouraging women to pursue the careers that they want. All right. Maraming salamat po sa ating resource persons this afternoon at maraming maraming salamat po Maraming maraming salamat din sa ating participants for being active in our discussion. We had a very fruitful discussion today at sana po ay na-inspire kayo, lalo't higit ang ating mga kababaihan na huwag matakot na suungin ang karera sa technology, innovation at ICT. We are sure that you are pumped up sa ating discussion at sa buong National Women's Month celebration. So let's turn that energy to concrete actions to take. PCW launched the hashtag We Can Be Equal Commitment webpage or page last March 8 sa ating International Women's Day event. Now, it's your turn to share with us your commitment. Maliit o malaki mong pang bilang individual man o bahagi ng isang kahensya or organisasyon o bilang isang advocate. Pumunta lang po sa link na nakikita ninyo sa inyong screen o iscan ang QR code to submit your commitments. Makikita ninyo rin po dito ano, kung ilan na ang nagpakita ng kanilang commitments at kung saan bahagi ng mundo sila nagmula. Now, we're approaching the end of our program. To our viewers who want to get their e-certificate of participation, narito po ang mga kailangan ninyong gawin. Mag-fill out ng online attendance form at ipadala ang inyong feedback tungkol sa activity by accomplishing PCW's Activity Evaluation Form. Mag-submit ng inyong commitment sa PCW hashtag WeCanBeEqual webpage. Makikita ninyo po ang mga links sa attendance, evaluation form at commitment page sa comment section at sa text description o caption ng ating live stream. Maaari rin niyo pong iscan ang ating QR code sa screen para ma-access ang mga ito. Ipadadala po namin ang e-certificate sa email na inyong isusulat sa mga form, kaya siguraduhin po ninyo na tama ang mga detalye na inyong ilalagay. Hanggang bukas lang po, March 30. 11.59 ng gabi pwede ma-access ang mga ito kaya better fill out the forms hanggang ngayon. Much better po kung after this episode, after our webinar ay accomplish na po natin ang forms. Tanging ang mga makakakompleto lang po nito ang makakatanggap ng e-certificate. Now, to formally close our event and give her message as we culminate the National Women's Month celebration. Okay, but bago po ang lahat, ano? Pwede po bang makahingi muna ulit ako ng heart and smile reactions bago po tayo magtapos para lang makita ko kung uh, gising pa po tayong lahat. Gising pa po ba ang viewers natin? Okay, mukhang gising pa nga. Uh, thank you so much po for your heart reacts. At uh, sana po ano, naging uh, uh, inspiring itong discussion natin para sa inyo, lalo na sa mga kababaihan na gustong sumubok sa ICT, ano, kahit matuto man lang. Okay, yes po. Yes daw. Yes, marami pa rin po ang gising, ano? <laughs> Okay, it was a productive afternoon, sabi ni Ms. Imelda Garcia. Thank you for the insights. Yes po. All right. Sige po, habang naghihintay po tayo, magbabasa po muna ako ng mga comments natin dito. From Ms. Susan Mabatung, God bless po, Philippine Commission on Women. From Mrs. Oridina, thank you all who break the ICT code for we Okay uh, nakakakita pa rin po ako ng heart reacts, smile reactions. Daghang salamat daw po uh, from uh, Paul John Brina. 
All right, we're ready. Muli po to formally close our event at uh, para magbigay ng kanyang mensahe as we culminate the celebration of National Women's Month, akin pong tinatawaga ng PCW Executive Director, Attorney Christine Rosary E. Yuzon Chavez. Hello, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Una, nagpapasalamat ang Philippine Commission on Women sa inyong partisipasyon sa National Women's Month Celebration Digital Forum Series. Pagpupugay rin sa mga resource speakers mula sa iba't ibang ahensya at organisasyon na nagbahagi ng kanilang kaalaman, inspirasyon at mga programa. This Digital Forum Series further showed the inevitability, the pervasiveness, and the power of Information and Communications Technology or ICT. With this, we saw in the first episode how government agencies work to enable and empower women through ICT and technology from online training programs to elevating digital marketing. But in the second episode, we also tackled issues hounding the industry like privacy breach, online sexual harassment, and discrimination. Today, the discussions prove one key point. There are and there must be more spaces for women in technology, innovation, and ICT. The internet can be a space where they express their voice, where they can learn, where they can earn, and where they can lift fellow women. But while there are indeed spaces for women, gender-based digital divide still exists. Studies show that there is still a discrepancy in ICT skills, in the positions held by women and men, in the amount earned through online selling, among others. Hence, the PCW calls for inclusivity in ICT. This is in line with the Digital Transformation Program under the Philippine Development Plan, which is seen as a way to improve the quality of life of Filipinos, women and girls included. Let us eliminate barriers to women's equal access to ICT, increase the affordability and use of technology and boost digital literacy for women, develop and enhance communications infrastructure in geographically isolated and rural areas, develop programs that will leverage the power of ICTs to address persistent inequality and ICT issues such as women's lack of access to banks, financial products, market information, among others. Aside from an inclusive and enabling ICT industry, we also push for the promotion of women's welfare in all aspects of life, from education, economic empowerment, peace and security, environment, among others. The PCW continues to call for gender fair legislation that will fulfill the rights of women and eradicate discrimination. We also encourage agencies and stakeholders to ensure a gender perspective in programs, activities, and projects. We hope that the National Women's Month celebration served as your platform to honor women and girls and recognize their contribution to the community and the country. We echo the statement of Vice President and Education Secretary Sara Z. Duterte in her speech at the International Women's Day celebration. We believe that when women in a community are given the opportunity to be productive, when they are given education and have the power of knowledge, and when they are trained to lead, they can change the face of their community. Let me take this opportunity as well to thank those who joined us at the International Women's Day celebration at SMR at Tagig City. We thank all our partners in the said event, especially you and women. Our deepest gratitude as well to those who joined the digital forum series, those who conducted their own activities, those who provided their hashtag Servicio para Kahuana. Those who we featured on hashtag Juana says, and those who promoted the advocacy through the online campaign under the hashtag We Can Be Equal. May we be unceasing, firm, and tireless in our efforts to achieve the twin goals of gender equality and women's empowerment, even beyond the National Women's Month. By working hand in hand, we can enable women to empower themselves and others so that they can fully participate in the deep social and economic transformation 
we envision under the Philippine Development Plan. Muli, maraming salamat, women and everyone. Let us work together towards gender equality and an inclusive society. Thank you. Thank you so much, Evie Cray. Maraming maraming salamat po. Indeed, kailangan nating palawakin ang espasyo sa ICT para sa mga kababaihan na matuto, uh, kumita, mag-express ng kanilang voices, and of course, to empower other women. Women. Again, maraming maraming salamat, Evie Cray. At bago po natin tuluyang tapusin ang programa ngayong hapon, aba, syempre, narito na ang inaabangan ng marami sa atin ang pag-aanunsyo ng mga nanalo sa ating online game. Narito po ang mga nanalo sa ating Crack the Code Challenge. Congratulations po! Kina Agatha Marie, Nell Miraculous, Michelle Nadlec, Isabella Lucho, Joy Carlos Malaria, Erica Rose Dosimo, Rajan Dice, Odise Binayog, Jeffrey Bertumen, Dep and Tayo Pamarano Elementary School, at Angelica Lopez. Ayan, pagbati po sa inyo. Congratulations. Mag-message lamang po tayo ano, sa ating Facebook page para makausap po namin o makausap kayo ng aming team tungkol sa pag-claim ng inyong premyo. Siguraduhin po na makakapag-message kayo ngayong araw para agad din po namin mailog ang inyong details. All right, mali pagbati po sa ating lahat. Now, we are about to conclude the Digital Forum Series. Muli, maraming salamat po sa lahat, lalo na sa mga nakasama nating participants mula pa sa first episode. To all our speakers and guests, again, our deepest gratitude. Matapos man ang National Women's Month celebration, umaasa po kami na hindi dito natatapos ang ating advokasya. Let's continue to work together until we achieve a gender equal community. Muli ako po si Camille Belda. Women and everyone, we are for gender equality. We are for an inclusive society. <laughs>